as I conclude my remarks, I want to say that we, we have to have a situation where Lake Street, a precious jewel of our state, is a place where Minnesotans can walk again, where businesses can be safe again. But I want to be clear that if the message was this situation with Mr. Floyd is intolerable, absolutely unacceptable, and must change, that message has been sent and received as well. And go the governor, myself, the lieutenant governor, all of us are committed to that long-term change. And I can tell you that I spoke with many legislators who feel the exact same way. People in the philanthropic community feel the exact same way. So I think we're going to do some real changing. We're not just going to fix the windows and sweep up the glass. We're going to fix the broken, shattered society that leaves so many people behind based on their historical legacy of being in bondage and servitude, then second-class citizenship, and now fraught with disparities from everything from incarceration to housing to wages to everything else. And so with that, I want to uh, hand it over to um, General Jensen, com uh, General, Major General Jensen, who will uh, uh, further elaborate. Thank you very much. Good morning. I'm Major General John Jensen. I'm the Adjutant General of the Minnesota Army National Guard, and I've been the Adjutant General since November of 2017. And what I'm going to describe uh, this morning very quickly is the actions of the Minnesota National Guard since we were mobilized under the Governor Walz's executive order. Like many Minnesotans, I woke up yesterday morning to the news that the Minneapolis mayor had requested National Guard support. The only difference was uh, I opened up my phone and there was a text from Commissioner Harrington. It wasn't the newspaper or the morning news that notified me of that. So immediately, Yesterday morning, I made contact with the commissioner, and we began planning on the potential employment of the Minnesota National Guard in support of Minneapolis. For those of you that may not understand how emergency management works in Minnesota, I'm just going to take a quick moment and explain that. In Minnesota, county emergency management coordinators or the mayors of Minneapolis, St. Paul, Rochester, and Duluth may request National Guard support to the state EOC. So in accordance with that, Minneapolis Mayor, Mayor Fry, made that request of the Minnesota National Guard. What traditionally comes with the request, though, is a layout of capability needed and exactly the problem that's trying to be solved. Typically, the request for the Guard and that type of information come at the same time. Sometimes it lags. So when it lags, we what we do is we begin preparing for an unknown mission, but in this case, we sort of knew what we might be doing as it related uh, to civil disturbance in Minneapolis. But it's very important that we know exactly what we're being asked to do, so we make sure that we have the right equipment. We mobilize the right number of soldiers and the right number of soldiers and airmen to support those soldiers that are going to conduct the mission. That element was lacking. But well, with the governor's decision to allow me to continue to plan, we began notifying soldiers early yesterday morning of a pending mission. Once we notified our soldiers, again with the governor's verbal approval, we began mustering our soldiers and moving them, moving them into the metro area, knowing that the most likely probability of employment was going to be Minneapolis. As we, as we met as a senior team yesterday afternoon, the one topic that continued to be discussed was the lack of clarity and the lack of a mission and a description of what exactly the Minnesota National Guard needed to do. My concern to the governor was, was twofold. One, I didn't know what special equipment I might need to accomplish the mission. And two, I was very concerned about being asked to move to an unfamiliar area of Minneapolis under the cover of darkness. I wanted to get out when it was still daylight where my soldiers and my airmen could become familiar with their terrain and familiar with their mission. 
we never got such mission assignment. We never got such mission description. Yesterday, we performed four missions in support of the governor's executive order. The first mission came from the governor directly. That came when we were notified of a, an immediate and pending threat to the state capitol. My immediate advice to the governor was to assign that mission to the Minnesota National Guard. And he agreed with one caveat, and that is the state patrol also wanted to support that mission. So in cooperation with the state patrol, we began that mission. The second and third mission came together. It came from St. Paul. Specifically, it was to provide security of the Ramsey County Law Enforcement Center and the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension. The key part of that security was to ensure that St. Paul police officers were not required to secure those facilities, and they were therefore relieved of that duty and able to respond throughout the city of St. Paul throughout the day. And then the last mission we did receive uh, yesterday evening was an escort mission for the Minneapolis Fire Department. The concept of the operations that we would move, link up with the Minneapolis Police Department, and as they went into unsecure and dangerous areas, that we would secure the area so they could perform their life-saving and property-saving missions. And we continued to do those missions through the evening. As the governor indicated, about quarter after midnight this morning, the governor authorized a law and order mission into the third precinct, what we would call in the military a clear and security mission. So under the leadership of the State Patrol, and the Department of Public Safety, the Minnesota National Guard was assigned a task and a mission in support of the State Patrol. We would follow the State Patrol and we would help secure the area that they cleared. Our soldiers remain in that area as, we, as I speak now, still on that mission, still securing that location. So people and MnDOT can come in and begin the cleanup of, of that area. Now, we also have picked up one other mission with the city of, of uh, Minneapolis. I won't cover the exact details, but, but it's uh, ongoing right now, with the Minneapolis Police Department. And I'm very proud of the relationship between the Minnesota National Guard and the Minneapolis Police Department that goes back to Super Bowl 52 just two years ago. Chief Rondo and I worked together during, the, during that Super Bowl. So we, we have had uh, opportunities to serve together, and I have a lot of respect for him. We will continue to uh, operate in Minneapolis until such time that the governor relieves us of that mission. Uh, and we will do so in support of the Department of Public Safety and the Minnesota State Patrol. So that's just a little bit of background of what the Minnesota National Guard since yes did since yesterday morning when we first notified of a possible deployment through the deployment and through our mission set last night and then early this morning. My recommendation this morning to the governor was that I continue to do the state capital mission and that I continue to do the mission in support of the Minneapolis Fire Department. I believe both of those are very critical mission, both to the state and to Minneapolis. And then we'll conduct follow-on missions again in support of the Minnesota State Patrol and the, and the Department of Public Safety. So at this time, I'd like to uh, introduce the Commissioner of the Department of Public Safety, Commissioner John Harrington. So anyway, what you have here is uh, a lot going on. Whoops, hang on, I gotta turn me up. There we go. A lot going on here uh, right now uh, in this area. It's turned into this this firestorm of, of uh, agent provocateur behavior and I think there's some of that going on. I think there's just some normal thuggery going on. Just a bunch of thugs that want to start riots and and battle and looking for a free lunch and uh, and willing to take your lunch if they can do it. I think there's all those things that 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 go along with that. And we're seeing right now Minneapolis burn. I'm going to show you a lot of things today, and. You know, then we'll get to some scriptures and look at what the Bible says about it. You know, um, and really, 
uh, kind of delve into that a little bit in the scriptures here this this morning. Uh, you pray for everybody. Uh, that's all this that's going on around here. Uh, you know, I just... Now, I... It's... I, I might have to try to mute the language on some of these because this is going to go on sermon audio also. So, you know, I just have to be careful with that. I don't want to defile people with it. I'm certainly not trying to do that um, to get the point across to what's going on here. But the things that I found and some of the information that was sent to me, there's just a lot going on right now. Um. It's not that far from us. And, you know, let me see if I can. Let's see here. I don't think that's it. That's not it. Maybe it's this one here. No, it's not that one. Hang on. Oh, this is the one I wanted to show you. Uh, oh, I'm going to show you that too. Let me see here. This is what I wanted to show you. Okay, I mean... Yeah, it's too. I don't have time to have Luke do that. Luke works a full time job, and I'll never get it edited out. It just doesn't happen. There's just there's not enough time. Believe me, I've got more work here of editing and things of sermons and all kinds of stuff than anybody can keep up with. I can, I'm gonna have to learn how to edit it better so I can do most of it myself, because there's just not enough time. Um. It's real bogus. They got to get it right. I mean, otherwise, this was going to happen. And ain't nothing left here. So when we start coming to the suburbs, when we come to the government center, then what y'all going to do? So what this guy is saying right here is, you know, we're we're coming. You know, what are you going to do? We're, we're going to come in the suburbs. Well, I live in the suburbs. And... Just pray that they don't do that. And I'm not even worried about it for me. I'm worried about it for them. I, I'm worried about it for them. Because if they come to the suburbs, they're going to get hurt. I mean, they're going to get hurt. Right? I ain't joking. They're going to get hurt. You might be able to get away with that stuff in Minneapolis. But they're going to get hurt coming out here. I ain't kidding you. I mean, I don't want anybody to get hurt. I know they need to get saved, and I know, and, and I understand that. I, I'm just telling you. They're going to get hurt. So it's just it like it it don't go down that way like it does in those cities. Cuz you can tell cops to stand down if you're the governor, but you ain't going to tell citizens to stand down when their homes are there, their businesses are there.
This just ain't gonna happen. But anyway, so it's real, right? You know, I mean, it's just. It's bad. I'm going to show you some pictures. I'm going to show you some things that are going on. I got that video, Colin. I'm putting that video on there. I'm going to play that video, but I got to play it without volume. But I'm going to get to that video. I got a bunch of videos for you. Let's see, where is that at? I want to show you something else here. Okay, here's what I wanted to show you. All right. Now bear with me here. Give me some time to unload all this, okay? Give me a little bit of time. But I, I got some stuff for you to see. Jeremy Kenley's on here saying, I support rioting and looting. It is a valid form of protest. Jeremy, you're a fool. You're a fool. Jeremy, not to mention that you're probably an agent provocateur anyway on my YouTube account right now live. Let me tell you something. No one said that they wouldn't come. Don't misunderstand what we said. Just understand that if they do come, that it's not going to be the same outcome. That's what I'm telling you. And I'm not talking about the police. I'm not talking about police. I don't care if you're in high school or not. You shouldn't talk like a fool. It's foolish to say that it's okay to burn down communities. How is it any less of an atrocity to stick your neck into somebody and choke them to death and you burn down everybody's property and everybody's building and take their life away? I don't care what MLK did. I absolutely don't care what he did. He was a communist. He was a communist, and you know what else he was? He was an agent provocateur. That's what I believe. See, I don't bow down and worship at the feet of MLK. I don't do that. Some of the things he said was right, but I'll tell you when it's wrong, and I don't have any problem with telling somebody what's wrong. Jeremy, when you grow up and you have to pay for stuff, you won't make dumb comments like buildings can be replaced. You're just a kid and you don't have to pay for anything. What you should be doing is shutting up and listening. That's what you should be doing. And you might learn something that you need to learn in life. If you think all that garbage and nonsense is about some guy dying, 
Listen to me, young man. You're being deceived. Jeremy, I never said it wasn't caused by the police. But guess what they're not doing, Jeremy? Wendy's is not the police. AutoZone is not the police. Target is not the police. Right? Mom and pop shops that are downtown that are minority owned in Minneapolis are not the police. So destroying poor people's property that they work their whole lives to try to attain, that has nothing to do with a civil rights issue. That has everything to do with a bunch of thugs. That's what that is. And I don't care if they're black, white, blue, purple. You can look like a stinking Smurf. I don't care what color you are. You don't get to do wrong because of your color. And I'm not going to sit and whitewash that and act like it's okay because somebody's black and I'm not allowed to say something to him. Oh, I can't look at you and I got to bow down to you because you're a different color and I'm supposed to feel guilty because I'm white. Well, I don't. And I'm not. And I'm not going to shut up because some black guy doesn't like what I say. I'm not going to. And if he's wrong and he's a sinner and he's on his way to hell and he's wicked as the devil, then I'm going to tell him, you're black, you're wicked as the devil, you're going to die and go to a devil's hell, and you're going to serve Jesus Christ the Lord, or you're going to perish for all of eternity. I don't care what color you are. It doesn't matter to me at all, period. You don't get an out to do wrong because you're black or whatever color you are or because you're white. If you expect that white cop to be judged, well, then judge him as a cop that did something wrong, not a color. And does it make any sense to you that these geniuses and brainiacs are burning down their own neighborhoods? What does that have to do with a white cop? So let me tell you what that is. See, there's other people and other forces working behind the scenes with this. And there's some people that all you have to do is whisper in their ear to get them to be violent. Jeremy, let me tell you something. Police are not helpless to stop crime. Not at all. And neither are people. I'm brainwashed and you're a little runt. Every day is the right day to preach the gospel. Every effort, every issue. But I'm going to tell you something right now. People need to hear the truth. Whether they're white, whether they're black, whatever they are. They need to hear the truth. And it's not okay to do this. Let me show you this. Now, by the way, I'm fair cuz we're going to get to the we're going to get to the the um the issues of agent provocateurs. Maybe government agents. Right? 
I'm going to talk about all that. I'm going to talk about all those things. I want to show you this list of buildings damaged. And I want to ask you what this has to do with cops. I want, like, I, I want to see what this has to do with cops. Ready? What's this got to do with the guy that got murdered? Or died? Or whatever happened to him? By the way, doesn't anybody want to see the rest of the story? I do. I want to see the rest of the story. I want to see an autopsy report of this guy. I want to see what he had in his system, and I want to see the entire video. All right, so let's look at it. In Minneapolis, Kmart Lake Street property damage, Penzi Spices Uptown property damage. Right? These are just local shops, some of these. Walgreens, Medora's Floating World Cafe, Lake Street Fire Damage, GM Tobacco Lake and 27th Fire Damage, Walgreens Central and Lowry Property Damage, Wells Fargo Lake Street Fire and Property Damage, Latitude Tattoo, LV's Barber Shop, Lake and 27th, the Hub Bike Co-op. Look at all this damage. Look at all this. Little Caesars. Man, they got Little Caesars. I went to that Little Caesars. Teppanaki's Grill, Lake Street, Home Choice, Lake Street, Dollar General. Man, they even got the Dollar General. Kayla, I didn't say he wasn't murdered. What's so wrong with people wanting the entire story before they make a judgment call? I don't get that. Are we so over emotional that we can't even wait for all the reports to come in? For everything to come in? For us to look at all the information, of course we know the cop was wrong in what he did. Absolutely. But what's wrong with hearing everything? You know how many people I've seen absolutely crucified in the media and then come to find out a trial happens and guess what? There's more information. Stuff was left out. I think you should wait for all of it to come in. Again, it was excessive force. Absolutely. But I think we should see all the information. I absolutely think we should. What's wrong with that? Why is that wrong? Who gets, do we, are we okay with like just lynching people now? Is that what we're going to do? If mob rule says they're guilty and you see evidence, then just hang them without a trial or what? That's not how the system works. That's not how it works. I agree. I'm just saying it's right to get all the evidence, see everything. 
Because I'm telling you, nine times out of ten, there's more to the story. I have no problem with, with assessing the current information. But you know what? I myself have been stinking crucified by people online with stuff. And I mean that figuratively. And, and all the truth wasn't out there. So I learned my lesson the hard way and from the Bible that you wait and you see what happens. You get all the information that you have on it before you jump the gun. Okay, look, City Trends Lake Street, fire and property. Did they just burnt Lake Street down? Panada Tacos. Yeah, because they're really bad people. They're white fascist cops at Panada Tacos. Panita, whatever you call it. Subway Lake Street, Seven Mile Fashion Express, destroyed by fire. O'Reilly Auto Parts, yeah, I'm telling you what, burn those guys down, right? They were wicked. Whatever. Metro, T-Mobile, Dollar Tree, off uh, damage and looting. Hey, Brother Samuel, hope you're doing well. I see you on there. I'll hit you with a big, wicked, big ball. I'll, I'll hit you with it. Speedway, East Lake Street, property damage. East Lake Library, window smash, graffiti. Precision Tune Auto Care. U.S. Bank. Look, look what these people did. Some businesses like Gandhi Mahal have put up signs that they are minority owned in hopes of not being looted. Well, look at that. They still busted all their windows out. Car X Tire and Auto East Lake Street property damage. I mean, look at this. Look at the destruction of this. Look at this. Electra Tune Auto Care on Lake Street. Property damage, vehicle stolen. Well, that's, what I, that's one of the things I'm curious about, a toxicology report, Gregory Pace. Because I know this, that when you're hopped up on drugs, be it crack or cocaine or anything else, your heart can literally blow up when you get too excited. And that's what I wonder if it happened to him if he had a heart attack. I don't know. Because I know you can have short shortness of breath, cold, sweat, fatigue, lightness, nausea, indigestion, heartburn, or abdominal pain. Everything that everything that hurt on him, 
right? Everything that hurt on him, sign of a heart attack. Right? I get a kick out of it trying to send send us messages about, oh, well, be careful about uh, COVID-19. You got the whole stinking city in an uproar and you're sticking sending out stuff about COVID-19. So stupid. Yeah, they look like they're practicing some good social distancing. Right, he said his stomach hurt and abdominal pain is part of it. He was lightheaded, nauseated, and indigestion, heartburn, or abdominal pain. I mean, a lot of it has a symptom of that. I'm not, again, I'm not condoning what the cop did, okay? I'm just telling you that what could have contributed to that like, for some reason, I know when you stick your knee on somebody, and I know what it takes to choke somebody out. And I would I would be shocked if that guy had no drugs in his system or he did not have an indu- a heart attack. I'd be shocked. But I could be wrong. But we'll see. Anyway, look at this. Global market. Property damage looting. Walgreens. Prop- I'm going to show you some pictures and everything else. Oh, Foot Locker. Oh, I bet you they went into Foot Locker. I'd be shocked if there's any shoes left in there. I'd be shocked. I bet you they went for all the good shoes right away, man. I bet you they were gone. Let's see here. The skate shop damaged Target. Oh, the Target was horrible. Birchwood Cafe. Yeah, they just busted their door open. Oh man, Thurston Jewelers, they must have put the jewels in a in a uh GameStop property damage looting. Oh man, you know them video games were gone. You know they were gone. Property damage and looting, they stole a bunch of farmies. They stole a bunch of drugs. Oh yeah, you know you know they got you know what they they went in there and probably just cleaned house. GameStop, Apple Store, Windows smashed and looting. Oh, I bet. Urban Outfitters. AutoZone. Feet might get a little wet. There's a lot of water. We looted our whole. This is what feels like a war zone right there. Be careful with your feet. We're keeping water all the way to the back. And That's no wire for that. I'm not comfortable going any further back than where Charles is right now. I don't know how. That's his alarm going off and everything after they just completely destroyed his place. And for what?
Wow, look how many fake counts this dude has. It's crazy. Okay, so uh, property damage, looting. I'm giving you a long list here. This is Minneapolis. Look at all this. Man, not fire and ice chicken. That was in St. Paul, by the way. So, you got property damage. St. Paul. Property damage. Minneapolis. And in comes another interesting character that we're going to look at here. You know, I think it's really funny that there's only 55 people on this right now. Just the names alone of the things that are up here would put more. But I've noticed... I've noticed that people don't get, they're not getting, I don't, well, anyway, I wonder if they're getting their notices at all. But anyway, we'll keep moving. Ilan Omar's daughter shows support on Twitter for Antifa group organizing riots in Minneapolis. Ilan Omar is no stranger to controversy. Well, no, she married her own brother. That was kind of weird. Uh, and the apple does not fall far from the tree. The congresswoman's daughter, Isra Hersai, who participated in protests in the past as a climate activist. This is her. Right, that's her. Anyway, is now sharing support for the riots currently going on down in Minneapolis, where she lives. In a series of tweets on Thursday, Hersey shared numerous tweets that could be read as calls to action against the police. On one of the tweets, her side promoted was posted by Twin Cities DSA. Want to help out your comrades protesting at the 3rd Precinct? That's the one they burned down, by the way. Right? Here's a good list of much-needed supplies, expect, except for milk. Water is always better. Bandanas, water bottles, saline, first aid, band-aids, gauze, alcohol, hydrogen, disinfectant wipes, heavy creams with no oils, additive goggles, plywood for shields, anything else useful for shielding from cops, tennis rackets and hockey sticks. There you go. Sorry about the profanity on there. There's nothing I can do about it. This is a fire just burning right there. Uh, Luke said that, told his dad that, that he was over in... Um, Burnsville, and you could see the fire and the smoke from the city. And you know what it reminded me of? Reminded me of Genesis.
Let's see. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain and beheld. And lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. Sound familiar? Right? It's interesting, isn't it? You can see that smoke afar off. Okay. So in comes another player, right? In comes another player, this Omar's daughter, right? Who's a Somali refugee, by the way. And Somali refugees, by the way, I thought it was interesting that I've seen a number of those Somali refugees down there in Minneapolis. I've seen a lot of of those Somali refugees down there rioting and stealing stuff out of stores. I remember being told by somebody from Kenya that the country of Kenya, that the Somali refugees came in there and totally destroyed Kenya. Their camps come over there and they completely destroyed Kenya. Kenya was a nice place to live, a nice country. They let the Somali refugees in and they destroyed it. Mm -hmm. So, Interesting, right? Very, very, very interesting. Let's see here the next one. Tell me this isn't retarded. Moon Palace Books. We're okay. Heartbroken for our neighbors and our community. Abolish the police. It's so stupid. Let's see. Anyway, that's not the one I was looking for. All right, let's go to another one here. Well, 
It won't surprise me if I don't get kicked off, but I'll just switch over to Sermon Audio if I do, and I'll go live on Sermon Audio, and that's just what I'll do. That's fine. You run along now, little Skippy. And let Mommy do your laundry for you, and you be a good little boy, and do what you're told, and read big boy books about about riots and everything else, okay? Because you learned that in school. All right. Let's see here. Here's what I wanted to show you. Um, now I'm going to have to mute this. I'm looking for the whole video. Let me see if I can find it here. Give me a second. Let me look for it here. Let me do something while I'm looking for that.
Okay, now I'm going to show you this, but I'm not going to. You'll have to go play it. You can look at the link up here. Actually, I'll put the link. I'll put the link in the description or in the comment section, okay? And you can listen to the content if you'd like. I don't really want to play it because there's children that listen to this and I really don't want to defile them. That's not my point in showing this. But I want you to notice this guy. There's a white dude in this blue outfit with an umbrella busting AutoZone windows. Okay? These guys are asking him, like, what are you doing? What is your problem? Are you a cop? They ask him, are you a cop? So this black guy follows him. This girl screams when he walks through here. He had a hammer in his hand. He turns around, as you're going to see. This black dude's like, I'm not having it, dude. You're a cop. Now, let me tell you something. Let me, let, me, let me explain something to you. Okay? Let me, let me explain something to you. When you're street smart, and you've been on the streets, and you've done a few things in your life that you probably shouldn't have done. You can smell a cop. Like, you just can, okay? You can smell uh, somebody that just don't see, it just don't seem right. Like, there's just something more to it than that. Whether when I was a lost man and, it was, and I was into drugs... And I was like, a, and I was a drug dealer. Right? So I, into drugs and, and, deal, and dealing with people and you got to, you got used to like identifying cops. Like after I first got saved for a long time, I used to be driving down the road. I'd be like, cop, cop. I would just do it automatically. When I first married my wife, she's like, what is the deal with you? Like, it's just it's just in your brain after you've been doing so many of those things, you know, wrong, that it's just it's just in your brain to like sense cops. Right? It's just kind of like in your brain, man. You can't get it out. And this guy knew. This guy knew. And you just like smell him. And you just know something's up. And this dude saw the way that guy was walking, the way he was acting. This guy, I want to rewind this for you. This is on Twitter, I think. So let me rewind this. I want you to see how this guy walks. Okay? How he does things. His movements. Now look at me for a second, okay? Look at my ugly mug for a minute here, okay? Let me, let me explain something to you. Let me try to help you. Please pay attention to me. Officers move a certain way. They act a certain way. They, they're systematic. The way they move, the way they act, the way they walk, the way they, the deliberate actions that they do. People like that do, they, they, they have a certain procedure about a certain protocol and the way that they, the regimented way that, they, that was trained into their minds to do. Watch him. Here's this guy with a pizza. He's like, bro, what are you doing, man? What's up with you? Why are you doing this? Are you a cop? 
You're going to get the cops on us, man. What are you doing? Now watch this. Whoops, I'm sorry. You can't watch it. I transitioned it. Let me start over. Sorry. Amateur move. Look. Watch. Okay? I want you to see this. Look how he walks. Watch how he acts. See? I mean, he even walks like a stinking cop, man. His direct move, like the way that he's going, his walking with purpose. He asks that guy if he wants to fight. He pushes the camera off of that guy. And he just walks away. I'm telling you, he looks like a cop. He walks like a cop. Okay. Now, you saw that. Okay? Now, some people are saying this guy is the same guy. I don't believe that. I don't think he is. I mean, I don't know, but I don't think he is. The St. Paul police deny it, okay? Um, I'm not saying that means that he's not. I'm just saying the St. Paul police deny it, okay? Now, something else that disturbs me, I just got sent to me. Was this? Kyle Hooten here reports hundreds of protesters are arriving in Minneapolis via airplane this morning per a close friend of mine who was at the MSP airport. See, I believe a lot of these people are from out of state as well. I don't think all these people are from here. All I know is, is they go to the wrong neighborhoods. That's right, Becca. He has the same walk as Dave. That's right. Definitely a cop walk. That's right. I mean, just like with purpose and straightforward and regimented, and that's the way it is. Officers or military officers walk like that. I think the umbrella was there to shield him from the... Oh, of course, no, he had the, he had the uh, mask on, the gas mask on. I'm telling you, you can see it. It's plain as day. There's more going on that like that. There's definitely provocateurs in all this. No, I think these people are paid to do this. See, I don't think that guy, I don't think that guy was with I, I don't think that guy was with the St. Paul police. No, 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 no. That's a Fed thing. States don't really do that as much as Feds do. Now, narc officers do that. I hate to say it. But everything I've heard and... every. Here's the thing. Narc officers and those kind of people, they are, they are stinking wicked. They are, I mean, like CIA agents and all those people, they'll stick and snort cocaine, sleep with whores. Um, they'll do whatever they have. They'll hit a midget in the back of the head with a brick if they have to, to win. 
They'll be dirty cops. They'll sell people dope. They sell them drugs. They enslave them. They do, I, I mean... Yeah. Yep. Hang on a second. You know, you got all your agent provocateurs out there. You got like, uh, what is his name? Copernicus or whatever his name is. Copernic or whatever that that horrible football player that thinks he's good, but he really stinks. That he just, he he's absolutely that bad. And that he's just made money off hating white people. That's pretty much how he's made money. But, because, I mean, he can't play football. But, um, anyway. Right? But anyway, so you have those guys out there pushing the narrative, pushing the uh, tweeting a response or, or giving a response to those people like, hey, good job, keep going, you know, no civility or whatever. I I'm just saying that they know who to push. They know whose buttons to push, but they also can push the wrong people. You know, people that won't put up with that. They won't let you destroy their property. There's those people too. I like what Reg Kelly said here. I want to read it to you. 
He said the racial scales are out of balance. Proverbs 11, 1, a false balance is abomination of the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. The video of the black man crying out that he that he can't breathe while a white policeman presses his knee on his neck and while he is already handcuffed is sick, disgusting, criminal, wicked, and evil. But if you were not equally disgusted and angry about a black man slaughtering like hogs, two elderly white people, husband and wife, in a cemetery recently, then your scales are bad out of balance. And you are an abomination to God. If you aren't outraged at a young white couple being abducted by three black men, tortured, raped all night near the, a railroad so people wouldn't hear their screams, then shot in the head like butchered hogs, you are an, un, you are an unbalanced hypocrite. Moreover, you've been mind manipulated into political correctness by gutless preachers, teachers, liberal media, and have sold your soul for acceptance from this God-hating, truth-hating world. The issue is not white or black. The issue is that all have equal value as human beings before God Almighty. And finally, dear hypocrite, don't pretend to care about that black man dying under the knee of a white policeman when you are not outraged at a white or black doctor ripping the arms and legs off of an innocent black or white baby, crushing the baby's skull, then vacuuming its blood and flesh. Get your scales balanced, America. The rank blatant hypocrisy and silence about truth spewing out of most news outlets like MSNBC, CNN, etc. is nothing but a sewer pipe from hell, authored by the devil himself and gladly and eagerly drunk by unbalanced populace. Are your scales out of balance? Does your neighbor's sin weigh more than yours? God help this reprobate nation. And that was from a preacher, and I think it was very good. I think it was very good. By the way, speaking of uh, babies, pray for us. Number seven is on the way for us. We just found out a few days ago that number seven's on the way. So praise the Lord. Uh, we thank God for that. And it's an answer to prayer. And we're pretty excited about what the Lord's going to do there and look forward to the future. So looks like the due date's probably somewhere around January. So should be somewhere by the end of January, I think. But... Um, Praise the Lord for that. Amen. We are definitely excited about that, for sure. And uh, thank God for all of his goodness to us. If black lives really mattered, then they'd, like I said before, a thousand black babies in the United States of America are murdered every day. One thousand. Amen. Lots of babies. We've got in our church, I think it's four coming this year. So I think it's four. Usually every year in our church, it's four or five ladies that are with child. Yep. So, and we're a small church. <laughs> well, I'm praying it's a boy, but I already prayed that for some months. So we'll see if the Lord gives me another son. But um, whatever the Lord does, that's fine with us. But we're hoping, we're hoping it's a, well, I am anyway, hoping it's a son, but whatever, it doesn't it doesn't really matter as far as that goes. It's not in my hands, it's in the Lord's hands. So 
We're just waiting to see what what the Lord does. Amen. So we're pretty excited. You pray with us for a safe, healthy delivery and a healthy baby. And that'll be a blessing for sure. He already did forgive it, Kayla, if you asked for it. Don't hold on to that. Just let it go. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you've already repented of it, it's over. You just put it behind you. God already has. It's already, that, that sin is already over. But that's that's all been taken care of. So don't don't worry about that. You just put that behind you, and move on in the future. Amen. Do what you can do for the Lord now. Don't live in the past. It won't do you any good. You just keep moving forward. You do right now. That's what I tell people. When you hear the truth and you didn't know it before, don't get mad at the truth. And I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying don't get mad at the truth. Repent of where you are wrong and just move forward. That's all we can do. Amen. That's all God expects us to do. All right. Minneapolis police chief says many people involved in rioting and looting are not from the city. Acknowledges. I see all the amazing things you have been doing. You are transforming business models and virtual. Okay, there's some commercial in there, so we'll wait and see what happens here when the commercial's over. But uh, I'll talk to you while the commercial's going. Anyway, um, we do praise the Lord, though, for his goodness to us. And um, you keep praying for our family, our church, and all that the Lord would do. Amen. What we experienced, which was a different dynamic shift from the first uh, evening of the demonstrations, were uh, there was a different tenor last night. Uh, there was a different um, group of individuals, and I want to preface this. The vast majority of people that have come together have been doing so peacefully. Uh, but there was a core group of people that had uh, really been focused on causing some destruction. Uh, certainly we saw that with some of the looting and, and setting fires. Um, we were certainly um, uh, prepared in terms of that immediate area to provide for the safety. Uh, but if any of you followed, of course, uh, the events last night, uh, the crowds got larger and they became more mobile. And, and so, at, you know, our number one priority is the preservation of life. And so we wanted to make sure uh, that we were looking at that from those uh, who are gathering peacefully in the area who are also being threatened and risked, uh, our neighboring residents and also those businesses. And so um, there was a shift that certainly occurred last night. Uh, we continue to follow uh, that information, that intel. Uh, I'm keeping the mayor uh, briefed on that uh, as we speak. Um, I, I will just say that uh, uh, it was clear to me and also hearing from our local community leaders uh, that many of the people that were involved in the criminal conduct last night uh, were not known Minneapolitans to them. And so, um, so yes, there were certainly people who were involved in the activities last night that uh, uh, were certainly not recognized as being here from the city. Um, so we did have some reports of, of, of injuries to some of our uh, police officers. I'm, I'm happy to report that no significant injuries. Uh, there were some uh, uh, community members who were out there demonstrating uh, who also had suffered some minor injuries. And again, fortunately, no significant injuries uh, that I am aware of. Um, Mayor Fry, in terms of a, a National Guard request, Mayor Fry is the only person that can make that formal declaration. And as he mentioned, he has had conversations with Governor Waltz. So. Well, one of the things that um, I'm, I'm very proud of also being a um, born and raised here in the city, uh, over the course of the last several days, I've been talking to many of uh, friends, family, um, in our broader community who uh, have said they want to make sure 
that um, even though we're experiencing um, trauma and pain and grief in our city, uh, they don't want to exacerbate that. So uh, they're going to be out there. You're going to start seeing more of our, again, community healers, uh, faith leaders, uh, our elders, and even our youth. And so I think you'll see a shift in that uh, today. So I'm, I'm always hopeful because um, uh, it's the same community that has supported me throughout my, my career. Okay. Uh, somebody just told me, it's a rumor, but somebody just told me that they heard word that 85,000 people might be converging on Minneapolis for the weekend. Well, that social distancing thing got thrown right out the window real quick, didn't it? So, outside people coming in. Now, let's hope and pray that they don't come. But if they do come, let's also hope and pray. I did see this, but let's hope and pray that they don't try to come out to the burbs. I just don't think it'll go well. Black business owners protect stores with AR-15s and AK-47s. I saw a video of this right here. I actually saw this video that when the protesters were going to come, not protesters, when the rioters were going to come, You know, when they were going to come, these guys, they had their their guns ready. See them right here? They got black owned on it. And they're all carrying guns. <laughs> So, I mean, some people are, some people, they're, uh, they're not going to just get walked on, right? They're not going to just get walked on. They're going to be, you know, let's look into some scripture here for a little while. Seeing how our Bible is perfect and complete and has the answer. Lawrence, I agree those cops should be charged. I didn't say they shouldn't, but not everybody else should be. Why does everybody else in society have to be punished for what a few men did? It's not even logical. The Bible has some things to say about rioting, doesn't it? It says here, be not among wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. Wow. They're boarding up businesses and everything else uh, in Woodbury, in Maplewood, in all the surrounding towns of Minneapolis and St. Paul because of a bunch of thugs that think they're going to destroy everything. Yeah, they really need to get a handle on this. I'm sorry. Even if Agent Provocateur started it, I don't agree with that. But you can't let people just riot and burn things down. Look what the Bible says here. Whoso keepeth the law is a wise son, but he that is a companion of riotous men shameth his father. It says he shameth his father.
What happened to the... Okay, Proverbs tells us that that riotous man shameth his father. And then what do we find out? We find out here in Luke 15, 13, the, the prodigal son. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Yeah, the King James Bible has a lot to say about rioting and riotous living. Look what the Bible says here. It tells the children of God, it says, In that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Not in rioting and drunkenness. Not in chambering and wantonness. Not in strife and envying. Look. Even those believers that defended themselves. Self-defense and things of that nature. That were abused by Rome. By different governments. They never burned anything. They never killed. They never hurt anybody. All they did was defend themselves god's people should never be in the business of viol of violence there's nothing christian about doing any of that you don't burn that's what rome did by the way they burned towns down that's what and let me just say i'm gonna say this and it might make some of you mad but that's okay you really 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 don't want white men rioting. You don't want that. This race baiting and this race war is a bad thing. It's a very, 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 very bad thing. And the Pope's white power structure that's in place will make sure that it demolishes minorities. I'm not kidding you. It's bad. It says the night is far spent, the day is it. Look at this chapter. This chapter, what it deals with is the second table of the law. Oh, no man, anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore love is the fulfilling of the law, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. CJ, I don't think that a war zone going into Minneapolis as a war zone with 85,000 people possibly descending on the city is a smart place for white people to be preaching out there. Maybe the aftermath when it's all done, but we're not going to be heard. We just make ourselves a target. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness. 
Not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. The Bible says, if any be blameless, the husband one wife having faithful children, not accused of riot. In a general sense, it's a tumult. An uproar, excessive. To raise an uproar or a sedition. The Bible says, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of rioting. This, the excess of rioting, right? The Bible talks about what these men are like that are doing this. I want you to listen to this. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are in blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin beguiling unstable souls. A heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozer, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. There's, there's those that they act like brute beasts. Right? Let me see something here. Hang on a second. I'm going to look for something else here that I want. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord. Amen? A wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul. It's hymn number 10. Turn there. Join me on that first verse. Every voice, please, on the first. Oh,
Amen. Yep, we've we've been preaching downtown and we've been to other areas. We've been attacked with knives and all kinds of other things. You know, and if the Lord leads, then that's what we do. But it has to be something God leads us to do. And it has to be the right time. And I, I don't know that that time would be in the middle of a, of a, um, a war downtown. <laughs> Maybe the aftermath when it ceased and the people were ready to talk about healing and getting right. But when, when tempers are up and they're burning things down and they're rioting, I don't know if they're going to listen to us. I don't know if they're even going to be able to hear us, to be honest with you, in that sort of situation. And you certainly would have no police protection. None. Because you see that none of these businesses have police protection and none of the people are having police protection. And you got to be wise. Got to be wise. It looks like breaking news here that. The arresting officer in George Floyd's case is taken into custody by the BCA. Department of Public Safety Commissioner John Harrington announced the arresting officer in the George Floyd case has been taken into custody. Former officer Derek Chauvin has been taken into custody by the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension. Floyd was pronounced dead Monday night after he was taken into custody by police. You know, uh, A source with knowledge of the investigation identified the officer as Derek Chauvin. Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry called on Hennepin County Attorney Mike Freeman Wednesday to file charges. Okay, there you go. So... What I don't get is is why all these you know you know um why all of these people are coddling a bunch of a, a bunch of criminals that are doing wrong You know, I, I don't understand why. I mean, you can't, the governor and everybody, oh, we're sorry and we feel your pain as you burn it. I, I, I just don't feel that way. I mean, I'm sorry that a man lost his life, but I don't think it gives you any right to burn everything down. You know, I, I don't think it gives you the right to. You know, burn. I mean, look at this building. Look at this. Does that look like mourning? Look at this guy. Does that look like they're mourning the death of somebody?
It doesn't really look like it, does it? People just, that's so stupid. Look at this. What is the deal? This man in here working out. Somebody's there working out, man. <laughs> that's a guy that needs a workout, man. I'm going to tell you what. That guy just needed a workout, didn't he? Can't blame a guy. He's got to work out. Right? Uh, yeah, it's not fake. You can see the whole city up in smoke. This was Arby's. This was Arby's. What Arby's do? Somebody said this is the answer. Amen. Basic instructions before leaving Earth. I agree. I agree. That's the answer. Doesn't this look like something out of Batman or Gotham or Arcane or whatever? Doesn't it look like it? I'm going to stop here and I want to wait for you to answer me. Does anybody else on this thread, does anybody else think this looks like something out of Batman or the Joker, the movie? Take a look at it for a second. Tell me if that's what you see because that's what it looks like to me. Look at it. it. It literally looks like, and I haven't seen those movies either. I've just seen things on pictures and everything else. But the point is, that's what it looks like. It looks like something from Doom or Devolition Man or, yeah, Demolition Man or, or any of That's what it looks like. Gotham City. And that's a real picture from Minnesota. Here's the National Guard. I'm thinking, okay, you got like Hummers and you're moving in with like, like what is going on? You abandoned five precincts in the city?
I mean, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable. Look. That's Walmart in Minneapolis. Oh my God. They burned it to the ground, it looks like. Well, if you remember, well, I don't know if you remember this, but back when I was back when I before I was before I was saved and everything, back Batman, Dark Knight, all those kind of things, that's that's the scene. That's the scene from like um Max uh something or other, I can't remember it. Right? This is the Minnesota police retreating. Right? It looks like something dark and sadistic and not even real. Mm hmm. I mean, think about it. It's here that they're standing behind in front of a police station with their stinking arms up. Yeah, Mad Max. That's what I was trying to think of. That's what it's like. It looks like something out of the Joker or Batman or something. Exactly, Paul. We'd go up there and get stinking slaughtered, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. They don't even like protecting us when the days are good. Here, man, they'd love to see us. They'd love to see us gone through. Look at these people up here standing up here. Now, see, here's the thing, guys. Like this right here. I don't think I do what those cops are doing. Now. I don't think I'd run away like that. I think I'd be out there and I'd be like. The only way to stop that is with sheer force. Here's another picture of it. Aerial footage of thousands of rioters swarming and lighting fires in Minneapolis PD 3rd Precinct. It is ironic being attacked. Right. Let's not forget that 
when they firebombed Waco and killed all those people, they didn't have any problem using force. This is downtown Minneapolis. I've preached here. We preached right here. I eat pizza right over there. High school Minneapolis completely destroyed. And guess who's got to pay for that? Not those thugs. Cub Foods. Look at this. I don't think they're pro practicing social distancing. Do you? I don't think they are. I don't think they did. I wonder if they got a COVID test. Probably not. Probably not. Yep. That's the south side of Minneapolis right here. South side. See, this is the south side of Minneapolis. You can see it. That's the fires that you can see. Gardens in Minneapolis, Betty? I don't think so. Don't call the car X, man. His place is shot. Walgreens busted out. Pawn shops busted out. O'Reilly's busted out. Buildings burned out. Yep. Looters at Target. People laughing and videotaping it. What? A, that is so weird. It's so trashy. So absolutely trashy. Well, so you've got all these outside characters coming in. You got Black Lives Matters that's in the mix of it. You got Antifa that's in the mix of it, right? They've got their representatives all over the place. There, and the government is still calling it protesting.
Waltz is still calling it protesting. But what we were doing when we wanted to be out there, uh, citizens, and protest what he was doing, we were endangering people's lives. And you had to have a mask on, and you you weren't social distancing, and you're going to get people sick. Right? That's what they told us. But that's not protesting what they were doing. They're just destroying everything. Peace only comes through Christ, folks. You can't make people happy in their own skin. That's something Jesus Christ has to do for their soul. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for sinners and he was buried and he rose again from the dead. He led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Paul said to be careful about trusting in your own flesh, right? Um, He said this, For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus, have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. Listen, your flesh, whether you're black, white, blue, purple, red, orange, it doesn't matter. It won't save you. It's all fallen flesh. It's all sick and depraved. It's all wicked as hell. And you're going to die and go to hell with that flesh. The Bible says, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. It says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It is the Lord that must change a man's heart, whether it's whether it is this man's heart, right? Or whether it was this man's heart, George Floyd. I have no reason to believe he was a Christian. I have no reason to believe he was saved. Both will end up in hell without the saving grace of Jesus Christ. You know what will fix somebody's prejudices? Which I don't happen to believe this was a prejudice issue. But you know what will fix it? Christ. You know what will make you love people? Christ. You know who will make you love people? Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Christ taught Paul how to love. Paul was on the road to Damascus. He was ready to kill Christians. And he said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And what did Christ do? He saved his soul. He gave him a new nature and he changed him. And he made him new. What is that? You know what's really, you know who I kind of feel sorry for? This guy. He's like one of the most hated men in America right now. But so was Saul of Tarsus. And Christ saved his soul and changed him. I don't know the motives of this man and I don't know what happened exactly. I don't know. I don't know. 
but I know the one who can change him. I sure hope he gets the gospel. That kind of hate that people have for you can make you kill yourself. When everyone hates your guts. But he needs to be saved by the grace of God. That man needs salvation, but so do all these protesters out there and the, actually these murder these these thugs that are out there running around stealing everything, burning everything down. Does anybody really think that those people have a moral high ground when they're burning things down and killing people or, or killing people's businesses and destroying their lives? No, they need the gospel. They need to know that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. They need to know that they're sinners. And they shall not inherit eternal life. They marvel not that they must be born again. See, Christians, we don't handle our differences with people like that. If somebody wrongs us, we don't, we don't avenge ourselves or revenge. I believe that God gives a provision in the law and that is not changed to protect the weak and for self-defense. I believe that. But that's not aggressive. That's a non-aggressive principle. We are not aggressive. We don't hold to an aggressive principle. As much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. So we love our enemies. Paul learned to love. Right? He had to learn to love, and he learned to love through suffering. It taught him to love. And this is not love, what these people are doing. This is not even grieving. If you think these people are grieving by stealing a TV, you're honestly just as stupid as they are. Or foolish, I should say, as they are. Or stealing liquor or whatever else. Nope. Vengeance belongs unto the Lord. It belongs unto the Lord. God will repay. These people need the gospel. Now, civil government has a responsibility to put down anarchy and unruly, unruliness and murders. They have a responsibility. Civil government has a responsibility to deal with those that transgress in that way. I'm talking about against the second table of the law, against somebody's life, liberty, and property. They have a, they have a duty to do that. And, these, and our government is derelict in its duty. By the way, They'll roll up on us preaching the gospel 10 deep, man. They'll, they'll have all kinds of people there to try to stop us and everything else. The governor has let this happen. And the governor's apologizing more for CNN being arrested, reps from CNN being arrested, than for the fact that he's allowing all these thugs to do this. Anyway, but we know who the answer is. The answer is Christ. So anyway, I'm going to take off here pretty soon. I'm about done. If anybody has anything they want to say, let me say hi to folks on here. 
before I go. And remember, in a little over two weeks, or right at about two weeks, right now it's about two weeks away, uh, I'll be leaving for vacation. Actually, it is two weeks today, yeah. Two weeks today. I'll be leaving for vacation. And I'll be gone um, with my family for... We're going to go out west, South Dakota, and go out to the Yellowstone. Man, I'm trying to find some kind of place to stay over by Yellowstone through that area that doesn't cost me an arm and a leg. My goodness gracious, is it expensive over there. So, and we thought about going on into the Grand Canyon, you know what I mean? Uh, but that's like 10, that's like 12 hours away from there or something like that. But I thought about doing that. But anyway, you pray for us. And pray for the Lord to provide all that. Boy, that's pricey. Uh, my dad goes with me too, so he kind of splits a lot of that. So I don't pay the whole thing, um, which is is fun for my parents and and uh, and also for our children and for me and Hannah that we get to have Grandma with us. We get in our big 15 passenger van and go on down the road. So you pray for us that the Lord uh, would. Um, provide for us and take care of us and meet our needs and all, all those things. And uh, thank you for those that have uh, helped with our ministry. And uh, thank you for listening. And I hope it's a blessing to you. Um, and I hope that it helps you. It puts a biblical perspective on the news and things that are going on and have us understand that. Uh, but pray for us as we as I finish planning out this vacation as well, because that takes all the time to get that planned out. And, and uh all that good stuff. So that, that'll take a while. Um, yeah, I know. I can't afford an RV. You got to keep it running down the road. But um, anyway, uh, you pray for us that uh, the Lord would continue to bless and provide and meet our needs and all that good stuff. And that we uh, have a good time while we're out there. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, also, you know, also, you know, pray for the situation in Minneapolis. You know, pray for that. And pray that it doesn't spread any farther. Pray that the Lord would put down the, the wickedness. That God would do something. That's what we pray, that the Lord would do something. Because if God does it, it'll get done right. Amen? So pray that the Lord would intervene. But we're going to be praying Sunday uh, also about this. And, um, you know, um, that's important. Yeah, it's bad. Breaking news, it looks like. Every home has things it needs. Things that need. Anyway, so it sounds like um, they covered some new information about that. He's taken into custody, this ex-police officer. Anyway, so you pray about all that. And... Uh, that the Lord would bless and use and take care of everyone, amen? Uh, and that a witness would come through all this. Amen, that, that we would be good, strong witnesses and um, Sure, we can pray now. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for all that you've done for us. And we just pray, Father, for this situation in Minneapolis. Um, all involved, Lord. We pray for your hand to put down the, the wickedness on every side. And that you would the truth would be exalted. 
And please be with those folks that are hurting and suffering there. Please be with those that are legitimately traumatized by the death of, of a man. And Lord, uh, just be with that man's family. And, and we pray the gospel come to those folks. And we pray for your hand to move in, in the civil government as well. And Lord, that your protection be poured out upon your people. And Lord, that you'd be honored and glorified. And please be with everyone on the broadcast today. Lord, be with all them that um, are listening and just help them and guide them direct them in their lives, the, the particular prayer requests that they have, the challenges that they face, the trials, and all those things, Lord, that you'd be honored and glorified. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right, I won't stream that Friday. All right, everybody. God bless